Hi everybody and welcome to Mike Near Rich Low Online, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. So today's show, Canadian wine, specifically BC wine, the BC wine country. Um, a question that quite often gets asked or posed or there's discussions all over the place about it. Um, what does BC do best? What wine really thrives in BC? What's our, what's our signature grape variety? I get asked this, I see people talking about it a lot. Um, here's my opinion. My opinion. First of all, BC is so young compared to the rest of the world. I mean, we are, we've only been producing relatively decent wine for like 15 years or something like that. 15, maybe 20 years, but I kind of doubt it. Relatively decent wine. Only the last like five years have we really started to take off. So we're still trying to discover what works here. Now that said, we are discovering that there are a lot of wines that work really well here, a lot of varieties. What I think is super cool about BC wine country, um, Okanagan specifically, is we have so many neat little microclimates. Um, the more southern areas, like a Soyuz, Oliver area, our big reds, our big like, our Cab Francs, our Syrahs, our, like our Cabernets, our Merlots, our big varieties, they rock. It's a lot hotter there. It's um, right on the sides of the lakes. So we get this beautiful like, just awesome grape growing microclimates. We've got the the Golden Mile Bench in Oliver. We've got the Black Sage Bench, Black Sage Bench. Uh, in a Soyuz, two amazing grape growing varieties for, for big red varieties. Um, a little bit further north, um, Naramata area, Penticton, still our reds do really well there, but our whites are really starting to thrive. Um, our Pinot Gris, our, our Pinot Blancs, um, another variety that does, I mean, another thing that works well on the Okanagan is our, is our aromatic whites. Uh, we've got some rock and aromatic whites. Our Rieslings have already started to get world recognition. Gewürztraminer, we've got some killer Gewürztraminer. Um, what else? I mean, we're trying to, a lot of people say, oh, what's BC's? Because BC is a small growing area. It's not Bordeaux by any means or Napa Valley or anything. It's a fairly small growing area, but we've got so many diverse microclimates, like I said. So people say, well, shouldn't we try to narrow it down to, to one grape variety? like?" Burgundy has all Pinot Noir or something like that. Napa Valley is really known for Cab Sav. I think we need to keep some of our diversity. It'd be nice to narrow it down a little bit more because there's a lot of growers growing a lot of sh just different varieties across the board in their vineyards to figure out what works still, which is fine because like I said, we're an infant. We need to take the time to figure it out. Um, other varieties that do really well, um, especially like I said, Naramata area, um, is our Burgundian style wines. Our Pinots do phenomenal around there. Um, some of our sparklings even do really nice around there. Um, what else? Chardonnay does awesome around that area. Well, like I said, we've got a very diverse growing area. So I got two wines today of varieties that, um, that have stood out to me, that are kind of starting to stand the test of time in BC, that do really well. I've mentioned quite a few, but um, yeah, I got a couple here with me. Oh, and before I say that, you know, it's funny, the new world, has embraced single varietal wines so much, just like single varietal Merlot, single varietal Cab Sav. The old world, Burgundy aside, um, the old world did so much blends, like Bordeaux, um, just blending a lot of different wines, and it really works. And I think it's, uh, I think we need to kind of steer back into that. There's a few different wines in the Okanagan that are starting to go that direction. Because uh, if you can make a better wine by blending, why wouldn't you blend? I don't know. Yes, I agree with the expression of terroir and the, how the grape thrives in that area and things like that. But I mean, blending really has its place. So I think that's something we need to embrace more as well, um, because we have so many different varieties that can complement each other really well that grow in that area. Anyway, enough said. When the video is done, leave your comments below. Let me know what if you've ever had a BC wine. What stood out to you? What varieties have you visited BC? A lot of my viewers are here, so thanks for watching from BC. But um, let me know what you think, especially you guys who live in, in the Okanagan. Let me know what you think. What, what does well in BC? All right? So, oh, and I have to throw a little shout out in there. Um, kind of what my mind going to this. Luke Whittle from um, Penticton. 
He started a discussion on um, bcwineries.net. You can find that in my favorite link section. But he started a discussion like this, and this discussion's still going. It's been going for like a month. But um, that kind of sums up what the discussion's been saying anyway, kind of what I just said. But anyway, enough of that. Let's taste what I brought. Two varieties that I think are standing out fairly well in BC that are really thriving. First one, Pinot Blanc. It's hard to find a bad Pinot Blanc in the Okanagan. So I've got Lake Breeze, Pinot Blanc is their 2009. And they're on the Naramata bench up near Penticton area. So let's see what this one has to offer. Under screw cap. All right. Okay. There's almost no point in even talking about it. This is just beautiful on the nose. It's super aromatic, just leaping out of the glass. Oh, there's beautiful minerality, just like beautiful wet minerality. Um, almost kind of like, like you just had a fresh spring rain on a gravel road. Um, and then amazing tropical fruit coming through, nice stone fruit. Like a lot of peach coming through on this one and a lot of like, oh, I'd say there's a lot of honeydew coming through on this as well. Honeydew and, and um, what else? Mm. And grapefruits, a lot of grapefruit. This reminds me actually of like a, a grapefruit juju or something like that. Totally like a grapefruit juju. It's, it's nicely just sweet. It's also got a nice lemon citrus going on as well as a little bit of something green. Um, just, just kind of that savory aspect that Pinot Blanc has, just ever so slightly, but it's much more overpowered by the beautiful aromatics of the stone fruits and the tropical fruits and things like that. Mm. Okay. Okay, this wine rocks. <laughs> it's like a... I believe it's 17 bucks, which is a beautiful price point. It's under screw cap, it's gonna stay fresh. Serve this chilled, you'll impress anybody. It's got this beautiful mouthfeel. It's got this hint of creaminess on the finish. But this beautiful, bright minerality. And you, you know what, the, the, um, the honeydew and the, um, and the grapefruit really just come through on the palate. Yeah, beautiful honeydew grapefruit with this, it's soft and creamy with a nice clean acidic finish. Um, just, just tart enough to keep your palate clean and craving more. I mean, my mouth is just starting to water drinking this. Kind of a nice, just hint of lemon lime finish to it. This is a nice wine. I mean, for 17 bucks, look for this one. It's a, I'm going to say it's a great wine. It's a great wine from BC. That's my rating for it. Okay, next one. This one's starting to get more recognition as well. Under screw cap as well. It's a big red. Ah, there's controversy on that, but we won't get into that. Tinhorn Creek. They're 2007 Cabernet Franc. Now, Cabernet Franc, I mean, Pinot Blanc is doing really well in the Okanagan. Cabernet Franc, to me, is kind of the the dark horse of the Okanagan. It does exceptional, but it hasn't quite received all the um, recognition it should yet. It's kind of funny, actually. I was in Napa Valley last year, and um, of course we tasted a pile of Cab Sabs. And we asked a couple of wineries, yeah, do you guys do any Cab Franc here? They said, yeah, but you sure you want to try it? It's, our Cab Franc just doesn't work. Um, we tried it, yeah, it really doesn't work in Napa. It's funny, because the Okanagan is kind of opposite. Cab Sav, although it does okay in the Okanagan, doesn't do that great, especially compared to Napa. But Cab Franc just excels like crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, so anyway, 2007 Tinhorn Creek Cab Franc. Go for a quick rinse here. And I'm trying to keep um, value wines in this episode too, so we can see. If you can find them and try them out. And hey, flip the video back on, taste them with me. So 2007 Tinhorn Creek Cab Franc. I think I said that three times. Sorry. Mmm. Okay, I could just smell this for hours. Wow. Okay. 
I just opened it, so it's probably got to breathe a bit because it is a big red. Uh, it's fairly young still. It's an 07, but I mean, 07's already got three years to it, so. Okay, on the nose, it's got this bright, like, a lot of kind of red and purple fruit. Mm, there's a whole bunch of, like, strawberry raspberry coming through. Some elegant plum as well. It's got this really neat, like, like tobacco leaf. Yeah, definitely like a tobacco leaf. And I would venture to say, like, um, actually, yeah, it's got this really neat, like, baked cabbage or something as well, which could turn some people off. So don't take it as like, it is all baked cabbage. It's integrated nicely. It's hiding in there, just giving it this nice savory aspect, which I really like. The fruit is more forward, but... Yeah, really nice. Yeah, some cabbage just gives it that savoriness. And Cab Frog's known for having this little bit of savory greenness to it. It's also got some like white pepper or something. Um, as well, I get like a little bit of really dark chocolate or cocoa bean or something on it. And the nose is just layer upon layer upon layer. And I would love to see this one in a few more years too, see what it develops into. And uh, let's see, $18 I believe for this one. Not a bad price point. Mm. I went safe on this episode because I've tasted both these wines before. Um, but I wanted to see, just show off. I mean, BC is my backyard. I live in Langley. The Okanagan's like a three hour driveway. It's my backyard. I have to love it. I just, I love BC wines because it's home. Of course I love international wines like crazy. BC wines, it's home, so I have to embrace them and I love them. And they've got so much more potential. I can't wait to see BC in like 30 years from now as opposed to right now. See the potential it has to go to. Anyway, this Cab Franc, oh, this is good. It's so well balanced. It's got these beautiful like tart tannins. Oh, it's like the raspberries coming through. This nice, tart, clean finish um, just gets you excited, gets your taste buds just kind of rocking. Um, there's almost a little bit of like, yeah, the raspberry, almost some like tart cranberry to it. And on the palate, it's got this really interesting smokiness. Um, it reminds me of eating like a, a real dried piece of smoky salami, um, which would go exceptional with this. It's kind of meaty. It's smoked meaty. Mm, so many neat, interesting things going on here. I get that tobacco's kind of coming through. Yeah, it's got that meatiness, a little bit of that, a little bit of that baked cabbage. Kind of reminds me of my grandma making cabbage rolls. Mmm, nice wine. And you know, it's kind of got almost got a hint of blueberry to it on the nose. And there's so much depth, so many different things happening. And it's not, it's not cloying in any way. It's clean. The finish is clean and elegant. Um, I mean, I'd be happy to showcase either of these wines to people who are really fans of international wine and just say, try these out. Brown bag and pour them in a glass and say, try this, see what you think. And I think they'd be very impressed. So anyway, two examples of what BC is doing really well. Like I said before, leave some comments below. What do you think BC's rocking with? Um, what varieties, what wines have you had? Actually, here's a question. A question for you. You can comment just so you have some a guideline. What's your... People ask, Saul so asks, what's your favorite BC wine? But, you know what? It's hard to dig through all the wines you've tasted and stuff if you're a favorite one. But what's one you've tasted lately that's your favorite? That just stands out to you? I had this a little while ago and it just impressed me. Leave that below. I'd love to know what you've had from BC Wines and, and what knocks your socks off. Because I've had quite a few that are, that are rocking. I mean, there's quite a few that have a long way to go as well. But like I said, BC's growing. It's an infant right now. I can't wait to see the potential in the future. So thanks so much for watching today. And we'll see you on the next episode. Oh, and the next um, Okanagan Road Trip series is coming up too. A um, couple, few episodes away. So look forward to that. All right. We'll see you soon.